so there are uh, this structure which we invented last uh, year in terms of doing this sub submit and this particular sub submit will dwell into the digitization of transaction processing industry and when we talk about uh, digital finance we talk about um, largely the banking but the payment ecosystem then insurance company then more or less <coughs> capital sector and most of these sectors if you look at uh, uh, they are highly regulated sector right and uh, until now it's mostly the rbi regulating the banking sector but we see uh, even irda came up with a quite comprehensive framework for the insurance industry then recently last couple of weeks back only the uh, sebi came up with very significant framework resiliency framework for the uh, uh, capital sector organization and every of the sector is a kind of regulated entity so in each of this sector uh, rbi has very comprehensive framework this year uh, for the nbfcs for that matter right so the transaction processing industry especially uh, is been seen as a probably the first setup industry from the uh, experimentation of digital economy perspective right means i remember uh, 2014 15 some of you must be recalling uh something that we came up with a strategy called as a jam strategy right uh, j is a jandan account and a is aadhar and m is mobile so putting all of this together uh, and why mobile because that's very interesting thing right why mobile became a central to uh, financial transaction processing 2013 was the uh, kind of defining year where uh, uh apple brought the security element in the apple mobile phone and google also bought this uh, sce host card emulation right so this security element where you can store information securely and you can pass on that information securely so suddenly the consumer technology ek mobile phone becomes an instrument to do the transaction uh, processing because transaction processing you need to store at least some information securely and also do the transaction securely through nfc to bluetooth for that matter right so exchange of information and storing of the information and suddenly 2013 was the defining year and after that apple pay google pay got launched as well and they become a very important story from the transaction processing industry perspective and many people uh, some of you must have done that you will upload your credit card into samsung pay or google pay for that matter or android pay for that matter right and you make the payments using mobile most of the western geography does that right and it would be eventually uh, going the big tech way where uh, all of these big platforms uh, probably play a role up a, uh, i think during that time i ran a session about how the social media platforms are coming into transaction processing industry basically right and uh, how they are transforming themselves for that uh, so this is a way of digitization right and uh, uh, mobile became very important because of this way and we Uh, very intelligently that time we set up the strategy called a jam strategy uh, I, we were part of those paper that government of india wrote in terms of uh, digital payment pay there was a quite a good interesting working group of mit and they put together all of the strategy and after that lot of things started happening taking shape and in 2017 the upi came into picture right so when you talk about transaction processing you talk about uh, Uh, suddenly the mobile and roll up mobile social media platform and they bring lot of uh, possibilities together one is the transaction processing ability came into mobile secondly because of the user base they have the whatsapp and gmail have millions and billions of user on their platform right and in, and that's why you'll see most of the uh, banking industry say that we are on a whatsapp banking because they need it's not like they want but they need because that's the kind of a, significant number of people on a uh, those platform basically so they bring the reach secondly they also bring because of the mobile and application that you have they, you also bring lot of those kind of uh, experiences uh, and third important part uh, uh, which is very important from that perspective is they also uh, bring all of those possibility the network impact to the entire payment ecosystem so this is a one way of digitizing the transaction processing industry right 
And then there is another way which is happening for long where every bank is digitizing. They were investing for uh, core banking solution, digitization of the channel, multi-channel. So this is another way it is happening. And this digitization is every banking organization inherently they have been trying to digitize basically, right? So these are two uh, post-pull domain uh, big narration at that point in time when we talk about digitization of the finance ecosystem basically, right? And both has a limitation. In the banking ecosystem because the transaction processing in the bank, one bank digitizing it is a siloed. And whereas it, uh, if you have to really bring the inclusion, bring the scale, bring the transaction ecosystem to the way we see it now, you need to break those silos basically. You need to bring a lot of those effort at an aggregate level basically, right? It could happen with big tech company because they can connect with all the banks and they can bring that and that's happened in many other geographies as well, right? So, but we have a challenge with the big tech company because of the data and ownership and privacy, all of this thing. So, somehow we found a solution in this country, right? We created this interface uh, named UPI, which is connecting to uh, legacy banking ecosystem on one hand, on the other hand, it could provide opportunity for a lot of startups to play a role, fintech ecosystem, that's why it is very strong in India. And on third hand, it can also engage with this big platform. And that's why we see even Google is helping us to initiate transaction, so is Amazon, so is many other uh, big organizations basically, right? And while doing that, we brought that high value, low volume ecosystem paradigm to low value, high volume ecosystem basically. Brought down the investment quite less. So this is, what is this? This is a interface and now we say this interface as a digital public infrastructure. So this infrastructure created and which is uh, creating the digital larger economic value basically. Right? And when we uh, uh, see after five, six years down the line, after 2017 when UPI came into picture to now, so we process almost 120 billion number of transactions uh, in a year, right? And now there are a lot of possibilities that will, that will come into the picture, right? So now, Things are, one is a, what is happening at enterprise level, where it can connect with a legacy bank, connect with this big platform, connect with the startup ecosystem, and nowadays uh, it also brings those uh, AIML, those capability, it can also bring the LLM capability as well, and there is an aggregate account framework which, come, which RBI brought together, and a lot of those transition and transformation started happening in digital finance ecosystem. And then the chain of a transaction processing, uh, we say supply chain of transaction processing, is becoming more and more lengthier and more and more complex as well. While doing those transactions in the shortest possible time, and we have been processing n number of uh, 120 billion number of transactions last year, but we are planning for 360 plus billion transactions that could happen with this uh, payment industry, right? So what are the role? Role of big tech company, role of fintech company, role of existing banking ecosystem, the supporting ecosystem and the regulators effort to bring most of this ecosystem and a regulatory uh, uh, cover so that you get a conformance, you get a compliances and at the same time you also bring that assurance uh, in the ecosystem. So one of the key challenges that we are seeing at this point of time is the fraud uh, especially. Uh, we still, uh, if you see number of frauds wise, the number is still significant, looks significant but percentage wise is very less as compared to other geographies basically. But still the sheer number is such a big, we need to be reflecting on that. And now we are grappling with the challenges with respect to this fraud, social engineering frauds that is coming in. And then now there is a lot of discussion. There was a parliament standing committee for this. There's MHA which is working on this. Then the RBI is putting a lot of this effort. And there is a recently there was a interesting uh, draft policy document RBI recently published about next generation authentication in a banking ecosystem, which talks about ki, how can we solve problem through authentication. So on the problem that we have it does with respect to the fraud and all this thing. So the discussion of a, a digital finance has all of this connotation. And one of the important connotations is privacy as well because personal financial data is also a very important part, right? And there are various different technology ecosystems. So one is what is happening at hardware level, what is happening at authentication level, cryptography level, what is now Web3 or for that matter blockchain can bring to the table basically. And a lot of those possibilities that uh, uh, are now shaping the way the digital finance ecosystem will be emerging, right? And we see quite a significant force as a fintech force that exists in the country. And uh, uh, we did a, I did a session on a uh, geopolitics and payment. 
if you look at the geopolitics uh, in terms of payment right and if you look at uh, all of those international payment ecosystems swift uh, one side then because uh, they they had thrown russia out so russia built its own system china already built one important system so this is also uh, this industry is also now increasingly getting shaped because of the geopolitics at a play basically and every country is trying to uh, up their game in this area especially the major countries china russia some european countries right and uh, there are there are key plays and our play here is very interesting play it's a more architecture driven play more this digital public infrastructure driven play basically right and this play uh, is getting quite a good traction in other parts of the globe because uh, this is more architectural story so we we are solving this problem with a very interesting architectural intervention and putting together quite a good in, uh, uh, governance ecosystem around it basically right and this play uh, is becoming very important so uh, uh, un is working on it uh, us government has put some kind of a framework document for dpi as a way for digitizing economy uh different countries like uh, france and some other countries have been trying to adopt this basically right so in a way in the in the geopolitics that is in play and those are geopolitics are very against each other for example china is against us and us against china's ecosystem our play seems very neutral in terms of architectural intervention basically and some people are building solutions on top of it and some people are trying to really interestingly doing this exercises and when we see these exercises and this innovation and those effort so what is going from now is very important and that's what this particular sub summit will be doing and there are various different challenges uh, with respect to the digital finance ecosystem that we can think about right from the governance compliances to regulation on one hand other hand technology innovation which is happening other uh, the third hand the kind of supply chain which is getting more and more complicated then one other important challenge that we also now working with some of the financial institutions is how the quantum kind of challenges will be changing the way this sector works and there are already some risk and some of the organization like npci has already made an announcement that they already started working on their crypto agility journey so all of this discussion that we will try to do as a part of this particular sub summit and uh, oh, we have a very good lineup of speaker to help us dwell into this uh, uh, subject in a detail and uh, uh, i really thank you all for joining and probably uh, please feel free to ask question interject to speakers which are talking about uh, how things are shaping it here with this uh, i am again thank you all the speakers and all of those uh, who are joining us today and hope to have very engaging interesting dialogue based discussion in this particular sub summit over to you uh, ravi thank you
Thank you, sir, for this insightful address. We now move on to the panel discussion on catalyzing the digital shift, unveiling opportunities and risk for of AI for finance. I am pleased to introduce the moderator of the session, Dr. Shivani R. Gupta, Chief Data Scientist, Reliance Geo. I would like to introduce the panelist of the discussion, Mr. Satish Kumar with Dibashish, CISO Credit B, Mr. Nasim Halda, FinTech Specialist, Mr. Suvin, Head System Engineering India, South Palo Alto. Now I request moderator of the session to take over. Uh, thank you very much.